just focus on God wholeheartedly. You will get there, but you need his strength. We as men, we're not equipped to do it. So whatever you believe in, just look to that, pray about it, and all will go well. What's good, my niggas? It's your boy B on another episode of the Edusa Podcast, baby. Got my nigga Kalibo the Dawn. It's your boy K underscore LIPO. You're back again, baby. Special, special guest today. Yeah. Finally got another female guy. I know it's been a while. <laughs> Makira Kumalo. I don't know if I said it right though, sorry. You said it perfect. Okay, cool. Introduce yourself. Let them know who you are. Hi CEO, guys. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah Hi yeah. guys. So as you said, I am Makira Kumalo. I am 22 years of age. I am the founder of A Hostings uh, Property Management, which is a Airbnb property management company. So we branched in Johannesburg um, and Durban. Yeah. And yeah, I'm a child of God. Very important. Yeah, Very cause, important. Yeah, cause yeah. Before the interview, like you said a short prayer and we've yes. never had that before. Like that's very important because as Kalibo said before the interview, we also very strong believers yes. of God and Christ. But how did how does that happen? Because I see like you are you a mix? Are you like a mix of black and Indian? Okay, so yes, spot on. Yeah. Um my dad is a Kumalo. Yeah. So he's Sasutu, Zulu and a little bit of Chinese. There's Chinese there, just a little bit. I I think you can tell by the eyes. And then yeah. And then my mom's side is Indian. So yeah, I am that first generation mixed, yeah. Oh, okay. So most Indians are like Muslim and Hindu. Is your mom also? So growing up, my mom was actually Hindu. Um, and then she converted. She found Christ. But that was like late, her late 40s. Oh, but on my dad's side, they were Catholics. Um, and then, you know, slowly as, you know, we started growing up and stuff, we used to go to church. I used to play both sides, both worlds. Yeah. I mean, I would go to church, but also have the red string. I'm not sure if you guys seen like, you yeah, know, yeah, the yeah, red strings cool, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, you know, I found Christ uh, recently. I, I was always brought up, you know, we go to church, church every Sunday. Mm. You know how you wake up, you go to church, you do praise and worship. I sang in the church choir a few times. And I got baptized actually this year. Oh, wow. And, you know, I, I never start anything without giving glory to God and just praising Him. You know, it's all because of Him. Where yeah, we are, yeah. all That's these experiences, it's because mm. of Him. That's so true. So, yeah. So is, so is that because of your dad? Because he was a believer? Um, I would say after my mom changed, it was more her practices and, you know, her forcing us to go to church and stuff like that. Yeah. It was more of my mom, yeah. Did she change because of your dad? No, she just willingly just woke up and said, you know, I'm giving my life to Christ. Yeah, Because yeah. she went through, you know, something and she just turned to God and she's alive and she's well. So, yeah. big ups to the big man above. Yeah. Is that like not like a bit of a conflict for her family? Because her family is Hindu, right? I'm assuming so. Yeah. Parts of them, so, okay. but my granny, I think she was 79 and she also gave her, her life to Christ. Wow. Yeah, she's 89 now. She literally just turned 89. Wow. So, you know, the Christianity just runs in the family and I feel like it's, it's very important practices to have. You know, what you believe in also makes you who you are. You know, true. Important. That's yeah. so true. So do you know how to speak uh, your dad's languages or... <laughs> um, growing up, I used to get bullied oh. because when I used to speak Zulu, they would look at me and like, no, something like Conte off, something's not right here. <laughs> and that really sat with me because like, you know, I was a kid, I didn't know anything. So I just stuck to English and I literally stopped speaking the language ever no, since. I promise you, brilliant. I promise you. Yeah. And then I came to Durban. And I literally see people who are mixed like me and they're literally freakingly speaking yeah, Zulu and yeah, everything. Feel, yeah, literally, yeah, it's, yeah, a yeah. it's a norm here. Yeah. It's a norm, yeah. And I'm like, okay, fine. And like all my friends, like I, I love the Zulus. The Zulus are the hill I will yeah, die yeah. on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So all of my friends were Zulu and stuff. And, you know, I felt more at home. But I think just growing up, being bullied and stuff, 
you know, it's one of those things. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned that uh, you were born this side. Yes. Oh, where, where from? In uh, Olivedale. Yeah. So Bryanston side. Okay. And then I moved to Durban when I was 12. Okay. okay. Yeah. And then I've been in Durban ever since. Okay. So okay. north, basically, because Bryanston's here in the north, right? Yeah. 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 So you've always been like a posh north type of girl, you know? Uh, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> kind of. So tell us about um, your company, man. I think it's huge that you actually own your own company at 22 years Yo, old. Bro. That's actually big, bro. bro. Thank you. And a property investment company as well. Bro. And it's, I see on LinkedIn, it's been like two years now. Yes. So since you were like 20, basically. Yes. Wow. Tell us about that journey. And um, how like. So, you know, firstly, being a female. Secondly, being a woman of color. It's very hard to find employment in South Africa. If you look at the unemployment rate in South Africa, it is frightening. It is frightening. Mm. And, you know, for me, it was a thing of I got my matric. I either had to study and find a part time job or not study and get a job. You know, I was still trying to find my feet. And so I actually studied BCom for two years. I dropped out my second year because then the business started booming. But even prior to that, I was applying for jobs and I didn't get accepted to anything because why I didn't have the experience but tell me if people don't want to provide the experience where are we supposed to get the experience from exactly like that's the biggest thing in, yeah. in South Africa that we struggle with you know As like you people. there's so many job opportunities but you, because you're not experienced we can't get them so I applied to like over 40 jobs I got declined from all of them Yo, and I came across a video on social media um, on how you can actually own property without owning them Mm. I was like, but what do you mean by that? And so I took like three master classes that were hosted online by other hosts here in Johannesburg in Cape Town. And I literally read books, did some studying on, you know, the Airbnb market, property market and that. And I literally just dived head on into it. I mean, all with 200 grand in my bank account. For real? Yeah. And now I manage over 15 properties. Um, the company is huge. We do, gosh, uh, property marketing. We do interior designing of Airbnbs. We have like the whole shebang. Um, and that's where, you know, Air Hostings was born. Yeah. Really. And, and to the top from here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. yeah. So to name a few, which, which properties? Uh, so we have in Mplanga Arc. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard of the pencil, but this, that's like a, a thing there in Mplanga. Um, the Millennial in Mplanga, we've got Minlan, Maine in Pretoria. Yeah. Um, I can't name, but most of them are mostly in Mplanga area. Mm. And Belito side, Zimbali side as well, yeah. So you don't actually have to be there, you just... No, you know. I've got a team. I've got a team of people that are set up in Johannesburg and um, in Durban as well. Yeah. But in the, in the beginning of the business, was it just you only? Yes. Or you and like a friend or two? It was literally just me, myself and I. Yeah. And um, my first property, I'll never forget. I, I was in Durban, got my first property in Kempton Park. Mm -hmm. And it was three properties. So he had like a lodge going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just like did all the admin work, you know, checking mm -hmm. details, marketing, all of that. And then it started to grow because I saw, actually, there's a gap for this. Mm -hmm. There's a gap in the market. And not only that, I actually teach people how to do the same thing that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Because again, with the unemployment rate, if... I could change that mm. i would be more than happy to do that yeah. you know my dream is to give people jobs yeah. without yeah. the experience i'm willing to teach them yeah yeah so how do you teach them do you have like a website where they go so and... we have like master classes over zoom okay um where you know people they sign up um and then we'll have a little zoom um call i would say or zoom meeting and i literally break down everything on how to find your properties how to talk to owners um how to where to find these real estate agents your pictures all of that as well yeah yeah, yeah. so we do that like twice a month so that's also going really really well yeah that's, wow that's, that's huge actually because i know yeah. a couple of people would actually really be interested in that mm. yeah yeah from where we're from because you know i you know a lot of people say to me but why do you teach people like you're doing so well why do you teach people i don't believe in gatekeeping mm. what, what is this thing of people gatekeeping like what do you gain from gatekeeping do you know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, yeah. there i always believe and actually someone attacked me for saying this but i always believe there's enough money in this world for everyone it's just a thing of 
the opportunity, we can also create opportunities for ourselves. Yeah. We can't yeah. just sit here and think, okay, an opportunity is going to come to me. I'm just going to wait. No, we've got to put ourselves out there. Mm. You know, even on this trip, mm. my friend and I, we came here obviously, you know, for the podcast, but we also saw every opportunity to have business conversations, mm. to put ourselves out there. Because right. if we don't do it, how are we going to get anywhere? Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's amazing because... Uh, actually, she reached out on Instagram and said like she saw the podcast and she thinks it's amazing. It's amazing, yeah. And she actually flew from Durban to here, you know, Santon, just to have a conversation with us, which is yeah. amazing. And thank you, we really appreciate that. We thought we were going to kidnap guys, by the way. Hey, we <laughs> 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 our prayers also on the call. <laughs> like, please, God, <laughs> let it not be a stick up somewhere, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And please just clarify, you guys are safe, yes. well, healthy. <laughs> yeah. So tell tell me about like the journey of being an entrepreneur at your age as well, um, and like how that is like because I, I can imagine the pressure you have as well because you still want to be young as well and be a young person, but now you've got like responsibilities and everything. So how's that like? You know, I also think that your circle, on your like throughout your journey, your circle is very important you have to surround yourself with people that you would like to be when you're older and that has always kept me going that has kept me grounded this thing of being an entrepreneur is not for the weak you have to have thick skin even if you don't it will literally take you down six feet and pull you back up and you need to be prepared for that you know, this is not something they teach you at school. It's not something they teach you in university. I'm learning every single day. My journey has been rough, but I don't regret anything. I'm, I'm grateful that I can have these experiences. It builds my character. It, it gives me a better understanding. And, you know, if someone else would come to me for advice and stuff, I'd be able to be like, you know, these are the steps. Take this step. Take that step. And yeah, as I said, your circle is very important. I mean, it helps with your journey, but mine has been rough, but there's nothing that I cannot go through without God. Mm. And God has been with me throughout the entire journey. Without him, I promise you, I would have been, I would have probably stepped down. I would have said, you know what? I'm, I'm tired. I can't do this. But with his strength, I'm able to do it every single day. Every wow. single day. To be honest, I really thought like you were probably like a, a silver spoon, you know. Like uh, I thought your you you your business you grew it when I looked at your page and yeah. everything. I thought you know like she comes from a wealthy family and you know they they helped you yeah. with everything. But hearing how you uh, you said you were struggling to find a job yes. and you started it from two hundred, it's it's really amazing. Yeah. It really is amazing. And the fact that you also took the route to struggle. Because most girls, I'm sorry to say this. <laughs> hey, I'm waiting for this one. <laughs> some some girls, right? Right. Would rather take the easier route. You know, okay. like I wouldn't say, but you know, you they, they know what I mean though. <laughs> so instead of struggling and actually like seeing it through, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I'd rather just do this and then I'll just get there and then yeah. I'll, you know? Yeah. Instead of actually seeing it through. Yeah. And struggling but and, also and, do you think that's an easy route no, if you think about not, it realistically yeah, that, it actually, that's also not an easy route it's not yeah. it's actually not. to go that way is also difficult you it know is. not yes. that i condone it or anything yeah, but yeah. um yeah no i wish i had a silver spoon or gold <laughs> one but i think starting from the bottom it helps you a lot to open your eyes to more to see more to life you know I enjoy it. I really enjoy it because if it wasn't a silver platter, a shame. I, I don't think I'd be as passionate and ex like excited about it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, speaking of like women and the, the parts they take in this journey, how is it to be like a, a business owner, CEO, like with men being like CEOs and having to work with men? So in my field, it's very male dominant. Yeah, yeah. Um, you look at all the other property management companies around, the biggest ones are mostly owned by men. Mm. And when I step into the room, you know, uh, people 
if they've done research or they heard beforehand, they don't really take me seriously because of my age. Yeah. Not only that, because I'm woman. Yeah. Um, you know, and and being a woman, I don't know why people degrade it so much. Because what a man can do, we can do even ten times more. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not it's not a thing of like because you're the man now, you need to be here and us as women need to be here. We can literally just do we're all human. We can do the same the same things. Mm. Um and you know it's tough because people don't take you seriously because of your age. They think you're just playing games, you don't know what you're doing, you haven't, you know, done such uh before. It's 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 a matter of what you say, what comes out of your mouth, how you present yourself, and you show them the results. The results will do the talking at the end of the day. Yeah. So even if I don't have to say much, they can see the results. They can yeah. look at our portfolios. They could go through the website, uh, speak to you know some of the other people we've collabed and worked with, and the results just speaks for itself. You know, you don't have to say too much. Yeah. Always sit back and just relax a bit. And then, what? Why the name A Hosting specifically? Like that name. Because of the Airbnb space, okay, I wanted okay. the air something. Yeah. I wanted to have air something because Airbnb is something that many people are aware of. Like if I say, guys, let's check up a place on Airbnb, you know exactly what I'm talking about. So I remember I was Googling some nice names mm -hmm. and I really liked the one that said air hostings, you know, um, it kind of sounded like air hostess and yeah, you know actually, when i it's, yeah yeah, it's giving that actually, yeah really. and when i you know i spoke to people about it they're like oh you're gonna teach people how to like uh you know be on the planes and stuff like that like, it has nothing to do with that you know so shout out to google for the name actually <laughs> yeah <laughs> can you like actually play gom for me like you know and then we'll come back we'll roll it up just like back friend. again for part two yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh you guys Love Gom. I, I know yo, Gom is like dominant. Yo, in yo, Germany. yo, yo. Can I tell you? When I was in Joburg, <laughs> when I was in Joburg, yeah. I never heard of Gom in my life. Mm. It's just like um, my piano was just growing at that time, you know, Guaito. When, when, when I was small, like Guaito, you know, old I house music. No, no, a little bit, but it wasn't the, like the, the house. house. Yeah. yeah. It's still like growing at the time. Yeah. And then I touched down to. To Durban, and um, hey, everything changed. I will not lie to you. Gom, <laughs> ha, yeah. underground, yo. I remember I went to this um, Shisenyama in in Shaka's Crawl. My word, they played some unreleased Gom music there. You know, put yeah. Gom on, you'll see something. I and people are shocked. I actually listen to that. Like yeah. I'm a heavy Gom fan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm um, actually very shocked. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> like, really? Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. it. I don't know. Like I call it Zulu heavy metal. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. when you explain to everyone else, just Zulu heavy metal. It's just so loud and you know, like yeah. not aggressive, but like people who listen to it are like usually like people who party a lot, like dance a lot. Do you yeah. know I actually don't, I don't, don't I don't party, I don't drink. That's what I'm getting as but well. Like, that's why I'm shocked that you I can wake up in the morning and that's the first thing I can play on the cool. TV. Yeah. I don't know. It does something to me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What are you like your hobbies? You know, like what do you do? Like besides going to church? <laughs> yeah. Like just on a normal day when you want to just go out and forget about work for a bit. See, that's very hard as as an entrepreneur to forget about work because yeah, yeah. is it bad if I say working is my hobby? Like I love I love doing it. Um, I also like spending time with friends, with family, trying new like spots and restaurants and painting. I love painting. My friend is an artist. Yeah, yeah. It's amazing. So I enjoy it. My friend taught you. Yeah. Like, even before, like, I used to do creative arts and stuff in school. I'm not too bad, guys. I can actually paint. Like, I'm not bad. Like, I can sell you a piece, really. <laughs> but, like, after I'd met her and I, and I saw her passion and her love for it, it just made me fall in love with painting so much more. And so I enjoy doing that also in my, my free time. And just being around nature. Yeah. You know, it's nice to stay grounded amidst all the drama and the working and the hustling. It's just, you know, you've got to give yourself some time just to to breathe. Yeah. Yeah. So he, he moved away from the business topic a little too fast. I wanted to also ask, like, if um, you've encountered a moment where a guy is trying to use his power. Like, you know, guys usually do that, like 
uh, they call it couch casting in TV and stuff. Okay. Like, yeah. You know, to give you an opportunity. I kid you not. I have I haven't experienced that. Mm. Not yet, mm. but I know if it comes, I'm very prepared. I've actually experienced that with a female. Oh. And because of her degrees. I'm not degreed, but because of her degrees and um, the status she has, she kind of power played that on me. Mm. Um, and then obviously I'm, I'm not working with her anymore. I just, I can't because you're not going to belittle me. And, you know, funny enough, it wasn't the guy. It was a, it was a, it was a female, mm. you know. One thing about females, we also have a huge problem. We don't really like each other, hey? Yeah. yeah. Like females, oh my gosh, some of us do just, we don't like each other for no reason. Mm. It's weird. It's very weird. Like even growing up, I were I had more gents that were my friends than the girls, because I would just butt heads with them, or they didn't like me for no reason. Yeah. I never really under understood. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. So, so you didn't want to touch on like relationships, but I just want to ask if like it has an effect on your business, like your personal relationship, like. I think it has an effect on, let me say, women in business. Yeah, yeah. Because it takes a lot to run a business, right? You have to play both the roles of a male and female, both feminine and masculine energy. Yeah. I have a lot of masculine energy. And I promise you, I have made some men question their manlyhood. As shocking as that is, <laughs> that's just yeah. it. Yeah. As yeah. shocking as that is, because people are so overwhelmed about what I'm doing at my age, how I think. They're yeah. scared that, like, it's scary to know that a female can think like a man yeah. and that I think like that. And it obviously has taken a toll on some of my relationships because it's like, I will never keep quiet about anything. I always voice my opinion. And it's like, sometimes it may be too harsh. I don't know if that's the mixed in me, but when I'm saying something, they receive it in a manner of like, I'm attacking, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. But really, I'm just speaking my mind. And running a business, obviously, I don't have all the time in the world. Like, um, I, I don't work a nine to five. I work like 24 hours. So mm. finding the time to navigate a relationship becomes very hard. And I just haven't found a man or a man like, you know, hasn't approached me that can actually tame me so that my feminine energy can come out. Yeah. You know, that I could be like a little girl. Yeah. Because I've seen it even in my, my family growing up. My mom was the breadwinner. Mm. My mom was the one paying the bills, putting food on the table and being a mom and a wife. You know, I've seen it. And I think that has also put some of the qualities in me. And I work very, very hard. And it's like, you know, if a man can't, can't do it, I'm going to step up. And I think they get very touched and attacked about that. Yeah. So it I becomes think, very hard. I think that's why you were attracted by that TikTok. Yeah. Because yeah, he's he's speaking about like ladies should be soft. And yeah. Really but like we all come from different, you know, backgrounds. And it's like if you as a man are not, you're not doing what a man's supposed to do. Unfortunately, I have to step up and be both the roles, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. On you that know? topic as well. Um, sorry for straying, but yeah, it's the yeah. same topic. Like since you, like you said, you're CEO, right? Yeah. I'm sure you've got people who are older than you in your company, right? Who you will work under you. Yeah. So, so even that as well, telling them what to do, and I know it's difficult at work because I also work with a lot of older people as well. Okay. It's sometimes very hard striking a balance in like, I know I'm younger than you, but like, what you're doing is wrong, because sometimes they may see it as like disrespect, mm. although they're actually wrong, but they're old. So how do you find that balance as well? Like, like this is wrong, you know, even right. though, you know, regardless of like, I'm young, but I'm your boss. Right. Kind of, yeah. I mean, with my colleagues, um, I haven't actually experienced that. We have this level of respect where they don't see me for my age, yeah, yeah. you know? So I've never had an experience where now, oh, you're not supposed to talk to me like that or respect your elders or yeah, yeah, yeah. none of that, in fact. And I'm so grateful. Shout out to my team amazing people um i've never experienced that and i think also i'm a really cool boss mm. oh my gosh i think i'm the best boss i think i'm the greatest boss actually <laughs> yeah, Does yeah, it, yeah so you don't 
get to moments where you have to shout at like people no i don't think i really have that in me i mean if you'd look at me do you think i could shout at you like <laughs> Or like yeah. a written warning yeah. why you late <laughs> take you to hr yeah. you know, like. <laughs> nah i don't think i can shout i mean my words are very strong but like i'll do it like this have you ever had to fire anyone yes <laughs> oh and that broke my heart yes. that situation broke my heart because i also grew a relationship with that person we became like very good friends mm-hmm. and we had a, a sort of balance where work is work friendship was after. Yeah. But how the whole situation played out, it really just broke my heart, but you know we live and we learn and I'm I'm grateful that ex- for that experience as That's well. That's why they say don't mix business with pleasure. Yes, and I've learned that the hard way. Did yeah. they like cross the line maybe and Yes. Okay. They did. I don't want to spill the beans. Yeah, yeah. Cuz they might be watching this. <laughs> but so if yeah. anyone wants to like work for you, what skills do they need to possess? Um no skills in fact maybe if you just have a little bit of insight on the Airbnb space or the property space you're good with numbers we actually are hiring yeah, um yeah. co-hosts we're hiring um someone to do admin work as well like mm. a clerk yeah so we're hiring you guys could check out our social medias as okay. well send through your CVs we are hiring at the moment okay. yeah so okay okay um do you have any more questions um since we were on i don't know if you can talk about more into that dominance yeah you can. let's nature. dive into it i love having this conversation so like you say that a man has to be dominant right in order for you to like bring out your feminine side right right does dominancy include like finances as well 100 percent. 100 percent, right yeah it's, it, it's a huge factor yeah yeah definitely you know? and, i mean even in yeah. the bible it says that a man is the provider is the provider the woman well. is made to nurture and right. protect the kids and obviously build up and, and bring the family together. And I don't mind being the nurturer and also playing a part to the finances. I don't have a problem, but it shouldn't be a thing of me as the woman. I am the provider. Yeah. I'm the mom. I'm the wife. Yeah. You know, I must pay the bills and cook and clean. I must pay the bills and cook and clean and look after the kids and do this and buy you a car and buy you underwear and do this and <laughs> you know that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Do you cook and clean? <laughs> I cook sometimes. Yeah. I can clean. I'd make a good wife, I think. And also, as my husband, if you are able to like run businesses and say you get locked up, mm. I'm gonna grow the business. By the time you get out, we sit. You know, I've got that mindset. Like I can run businesses. Yeah. So this is actually my second business, by the way. Um, the first one I had when I was 19, I was in a different path spiritually. So I was more into what, what do they call them? The chakra hands. I was a chakra hand, oh, you know, with the, <laughs> the, the crystals and the incense and all yeah. these things. So before like God, yes. And I saw a gap of kind of these little packages for people that are on the journey. So I used to like hand make, um, incense holders and give them crystals and stuff like that obviously that didn't work out but mm. i learned from it and i made a really cute website i think it's still up yeah yeah so you learned from it business wise yeah. yeah i mean i think from that i made like five sales mm. and it just like died completely why because of the religion um i don't know i think also i didn't fully do my research remember when you start a business you need to look for a problem and come with a solution mm. what solution are you solving yeah. you can't just start up a business if there's no problem there's so many other solutions but what makes your solution different and unique mm. so i think i just didn't wow. do that much of That's research and it failed but i'm grateful it failed because it built me up again and although it's a totally different industry i mean more of your airbnb short term you know Big switch, big jump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think also because those kind of things are not aligned with God also. So I think yeah. when you found God... No, 100%. You, I don't know if it happened before or after that you found God. But yeah, I think... Uh, I, pray, I prayed about it and I feel like prayer is what keeps you grounded. Mm. I mean, I can't tell you where I get the strength to do it every day. My phone rings nonstop. Mm. I've got meetings, I've got to deal with people. And I was never a people's person. Yeah. I had hectic anxiety. Yeah. 
like um if i would be in a room with a lot of people i'd be very like scared and stuff um and now i put me on stage i'm ready um you know so i think with with god he plays such a big role in that and i think people take that for granted like things happen for a reason yeah. as long as we're praying about it we are protected and nothing will come in between that how faith you, over in, fear in high yeah. school like how are you in high school actually like were you like the shy girl into like so sports I, or i moved schools a lot okay. um in joburg i was involved in netball and running i came out second all the time um now i can't run i'm a slow walker and friends I, i don't know i think so and relay as well um and then obviously in high school and stuff i was like to myself i didn't pop a lot like yeah, yeah. i wasn't trying to be everyone's friend um in like so in high school it was me and um my close friend and we were it was just us two literally against the world like i didn't really look to be that girl yeah, yeah as yeah. well um but in grade 9 and in grade 10 so 8 9 and 10 I was like a big thing on Instagram like I had like 15,000 followers at my young age. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, that also like then brought a lot of people wanting to be my friend and stuff like that but yeah, yeah. I saw like through them so I didn't really You know I went to school to get the work done and go home basically yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Why did you have so many followers? What type of content were you posting? Of myself? Yeah. Uh Of myself, I think we kind of knew Instagram when it just started out, and we just posted like content. It was me and my sis. We posted content of ourselves and stuff, and just put ourselves out there, yeah. and we didn't expect it to grow as much as it did. I mean, in grade nine, who would think like you know? Yeah, but obviously yeah. now today, there's a lot of grade nines that are up there on Instagram and stuff. Yeah. But I had my fair share of that, and I was like, you know, it's not really worth it. Those followers, you know, what are they going to really do for you? Yeah. You're also very big on TikTok right now as well. <laughs> yeah. Like I can tell point K followers as well and like that's huge. But at Thank least now you. you you it's, it's helping you now. Yeah, mm. it's business, business related, business related yeah. Well, yeah. At that time it wasn't really It wasn't just that deep. Clout. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So how did you get to so many followers as well on TikTok? I'm not on TikTok though. You on TikTok. Mm. Okay, like, so I don't know like that's a lot. Um I remember I just had got out of a breakup. I was down bad. My parents took me for lunch. No, sorry, late dinner. And I was like editing this video of me like explaining how someone can actually um have a property but it's not theirs but they can manage it and how to do it. So I did like a step by step video. I literally posted it and that thing went viral i think it's sitting now at 700 uh, 750 mm. or 7 i don't know but 700k yeah. views yeah almost a million views mm. um by me just providing steps and people really appreciated that because i didn't gatekeep such information mm. like i gave it to them and people had so much of good feedback from that Um and then ever since like people would see my content and how the business started to grow and how I teach people and you know people are actually making an income from you know my teachings and stuff and people have just been so interested ever since. So that's what you you post. Uh, yeah, on, on or, like business related yeah. stuff. Yeah. We also have a TikTok for the business as well, a yeah. separate yeah. thing. Yeah. That's also going viral at the moment because we have like this special um where we as a hostings we want to provide a luxurious experience to those who may or can't afford to have it you know when you book into an airbnb you need to have like you know some started like 3000 rand a night some 2.5 we've kept it down to like 650 a night and yeah, that yeah, has yeah. went crazy mm-hmm. you know and for me to be able to give people those experiences make me so happy You know, there's so many families that have approached us like, you know, oh my gosh, this is amazing. We want to take the kids to come and book in Mshanga and experience the area. And if we can, you know, provide that, why not? You know, funny that you mentioned that. I actually have a friend who uh it's his birthday on the 1st of September and they want to book an Airbnb yeah. for the weekend, but we don't know where to go as well. Like we're still trying to figure it out. Right. Would you be able to help us with Of course. Okay, cool. Give me a call. I got you. For sure. For sure. For I sure. got you. Okay, uh there's one question we always ask 
everyone. Okay. Since like we we still need to interview. Um, if you only had twenty four hours left to live, what would you do? Tell everyone about God, and God loves them. Yeah. yeah. Because I know after the twenty four hours, it's either I'm going to heaven or hell, but I know who my God is, and. Me just telling everyone about God, I can save someone's life. You mm. never know what someone may be going through. If something just drops in my spirit, and I must just say, God loves you. He can see you trying. He could see you might have hiccups here and there, but that doesn't mean He loves you any less. Mm. Matter of fact, He loves you even more. We are all the same in His eyes. We're not different. You could kill someone. You could take drugs. God doesn't judge you for that. He loves you, and if I could tell that to everyone, I think I would. I would love to do that. You are important. You are heard, and I think also on on mental health, not just for people that have businesses, but but in general, I don't feel like it's talked about enough. To get into any industry is very hard. I also was depressed. I had depression. I was actually diagnosed with depression. The only way I got through that was through prayer and just giving everything to God. I mean, I was even prescribed to take like medication and stuff. And I'm someone who hates medication. I can't. Please don't. Like even if I'm sick, I'll just take one like mid lemon mm-hmm. Vicks. I'm good. And you know, I just believe so strongly in prayer because it's done so much for me. Mm. And if I can just put it out there, like even like something's happening in my spirit, even for you guys, like mm. God sees what you guys are doing. Mm. Like look where you are today. Mm. You know, yes, it took a very long time, but remember you, his timing, not yours. And you might see like your competitors or other people, it might take a very long or very quick time, but God is working behind closed doors. He's got something 10 times better. Mm. And I need you guys to know that like God is working. God is working. God is working. Mm. So if I had 24 hours, I would, I would, I would tell that to everyone. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Wow. Viral moment. Right? Viral moment. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to change on TikTok. <laughs> but wow. What okay. an interview. Wow. Okay. So do you have any other businesses? No. Yeah. Um, I would like to though, because yeah. Air Hostings is growing at a fast pace and I obviously want it to grow. I want to employ more people and then I want to branch into other things. Oh. I enjoy opening businesses, running businesses so much. And I I know like there's just room for everyone. I mean, yeah. if you have an idea, please execute because someone else is then going to execute it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'd like to, in the next few years, open a couple of more businesses in what industry, I'm not sure. I've always wanted to have a, a construction company and I've also wanted to have like a little cafe um, and a plant shop, shame. Yeah. Like have like flowers and I love weed. flowers, not weed, <laughs> <laughs> flowers, you know. So hopefully I get to reach that goal oh, in the okay. next few years. I was actually going to ask you your five-year plan or where you see yourself in five years, but I guess you've answered that. Oh, I can answer yeah. that. You can answer that as well, yeah. In depth. Okay, so where I see myself in five years. Um, so I recently just got a property. Um, but I'd like to get many more. I'd like to get many more of my own investments properties. You know, I'd like to grow more businesses. Um, you know, I'd say, yeah, I just want to grow more businesses, get much closer to God and see what he has in store with me. When I'm back in five years, we'll see, we'll do like a little relay and see how that, that pointed out. Oh, thank you, Makida. Yeah. Oh, I also wanted to ask, like, your name, Makida. Is it Makida? Like, is it a Zulu name? Is it, like, you said you're Sutu, now your dad's Sutu. Yes. Is it like a Sutu name? No. Or? So, Makida comes from Swahili. It's Swahili. Oh. My mom went to Swaziland and uh, she heard the name Makida. Mak- Mak- it means queen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, it's queen in Swahili. Oh. And then my second name is Palesa. Uh, which my grandmother named me oh. after Maausi. So it's Mikira Palesa Kumalo. Okay. Oh, okay. Beautiful name. Without, without the, the age. age. Yeah. Yes. Without the age. Everyone yeah. says that. Like, yeah, yeah without yeah. the age. I blame that on home affairs. 
Oh, so it's supposed oh. to have an H. Yes. Yeah, because my like, dad has the KH. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my mom went to home affairs. Obviously, she's an Indian brown woman. And the lady looked at her and she was like, eh, eh, there's no way you're Kumala. Like, huh? Yeah, yeah. So she spelt it like that. What? And ever since, like, all my siblings and my mom are KU, yeah. which is crazy. Yeah. So I don't think I'd change it back. I think I've already made, you know, a yeah. name and a Isn't trademark it, yeah. for it. Yeah. Um, do you think, like, within the Sutu and Zulu culture, me having, like, not the H, would that impact anything realistically? I think I've seen a lot of people without the age, and it confused me. Even my surname. Like, yeah. I'm Swati. My surname is Bupega. Okay. And it's with an age, but some people, they don't have the age. So when you say it's home affairs, it kind of makes sense. Yeah. I think, I think it might be a home affairs mistake. Yeah. Even with my with yeah. Bupega. I think. That but like when sense. it comes to like... Because me, I want to have a traditional wedding. Yeah. 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 I either want to have a Zulu wedding or Spedi wedding, or, but I want it to, like a traditional wedding. I don't know if... I also want to keep my surname. And people say that's bad. Can't you have like a double barrel surname? Maybe like Kumalo. I don't know. Kumalo and something else. That would be possible, right? Yeah, it is possible, yeah. yeah. But what if I just want to keep my surname? Is yeah. that just okay as as a, as a black man as a Zulu man is that disrespectful if I don't want to take you have to have a, a I think it is I think it is Yeah you have I to have a soft is. guy and you don't want a soft guy <laughs> 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 Yeah I, I think it kind of is <laughs> Yeah it really is cuz I I know it has to do with also like ancestors and stuff Yeah and all that kind of stuff mm. Yeah Okay Yeah Well hopefully my husband doesn't mind Yeah I want to keep the kumalo there also Yeah Double barrel would be cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cater for both. So we collabed and we have, we believe in networking. How we met was through networking, right? And I feel like networking is very important because you don't know who might be your next client. Mm. You don't know who that person might know someone who might need your services. You never know who you speak to until you actually speak to them. Yeah. So we have something called the circle of success, which he's going to dig much deeper into. And that stems from how important networking is. Not only, I mean, if you look around in Johannesburg and in Durban, there's not a circle of people who are under 30 that are entrepreneurs that are all together as one. Mm. And that's what we want to create. We want people under 30, male or female, that have businesses to come together so we can advise each other on certain things. I mean, you might have so many questions about business that I could answer. You know, I have many, I, I probably have so many questions you might answer because probably you went through that, you know? Mm. So, you know, it's very important just to put yourself out there to network and that's how Circle of you know, Success was born. And it's, it's amazing. So we'll have like events where we come together. Um, we could do it like, you know, in restaurants and, you know, just a space for people to be comfortable, share ideas, see how we can help each other because it takes the youth to yeah. grow the youth. Yeah. We can't do it on our own. We got to do this together. As I said, there's enough money in this world. There's enough bread, but we need to at least help each other make the bread yeah. at the end of the so day. it's almost like a Forbes 30 under 30 Yeah. Situation. Yeah. Mm. I hope, I hope I'm also yeah. on Forbes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's my, my goal, my long-term goal. Oh, yeah. yeah. Five-year plan. Yeah. So Forbes 30 definitely. 30. Wow, that's huge. So is Thank it just you. for Durban people or for anyone from wherever? Um, are? Just Durban. Yeah, yeah. But... For oh, no. now, if there is a demand, we are more than happy to branch out into Johannesburg. Okay. I know this has so much potential. And you look at all these business seminars and all these master classes and you know things that they have for entrepreneurs, but it's people like over 40 and mostly yeah. male. Yeah. You know? So I'm excited to create the space for everyone around. I'm very excited. Wow. Oh, thank you, Makita. Thank you Welcome. for flying all, all the way from Durban. It was amazing. To have a chat with us. We really appreciate you. Of course. Thank is you for anyone, your time. Is any last thing you want to say to yeah. anyone watching this? Just focus on God wholeheartedly. You will get there. 
but you need his strength. We as men, we're not equipped to do it. So whatever you believe in, just look to that, pray about it, and all will go well. And if you guys have any business ideas, maybe you want to collab in business and stuff, I'm open to that. I believe in, you know, inspiring and uplifting the youth. So you guys, if you have any business idea, let's talk, let's work, let's collab. Let's make the bag. No yeah. No kizzy. Thanks. No cap, no kizzy. <laughs> Peace out. Thank Peace. you. Peace. <laughs>